I want to also play actually because I haven't listened to it yet. So I want to play with it you, you, live, courtesy of this little podcast I do here. I want to play the new Kendrick Lamar record. So Kendrick Lamar put out a record just the other day, and everybody's going a bit crazy for it. So I want to actually see what this fucking Kendrick record is saying so that we can then react to it together like a family so let me actually get up the genius part of it because then i want to read the lyrics after but i want to give it a one listen because i usually don't like listening to it with the lyrics first i want to give it a listen first through and then we'll go through the lyrics and see what he's saying but he put out a track um maybe the timing's a bit weird i feel like it wasn't necessary um he won the battle and um clearly won the battle i feel like even though drake's my favorite artist and i'd still listen to more drake than kendrick he clearly won the battle but maybe all this noise around the super bowl thing um has maybe prompted him to kind of come out and say something but i don't think he needed to say something even if drake wants a round two there's no real need to go out there and put out another record because you won you know and because you win you, you you get to dictate the next terms you, you know what i mean if you don't want a round two if you're happy to just take your win and keep it moving you can do so um no one can force you to do a round two so i don't think he needed to fucking um put out this record but maybe this is completely separate to everything maybe it's just a standalone thing maybe this is a primer to an album that's meant to be coming out because you'd imagine with a super bowl you want to take advantage of that you know announcement and also put out an album which i'm sure you'll probably do so maybe we we're all reading too much into it and it's not really that big of a deal and he just put out the record to put it out but let's read it let's check it out anyway this is courtesy of kendrick lamar's instagram account it's called the track's called watch the party die i don't think it's out yet on digital streaming platforms let me actually check my phone if it's out is it out yet on dsps i don't think it's out yet on dsps let's actually check my phone uh, no it's not out on dsps yet but i'm assuming it will be out soon but it's not out just yet so let's actually play this record and see what kendrick lamar has been saying this is kendrick lamar watch the party die <laughs>
wow, 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 wow. That was fucking good. Holy shit. Yeah, that was fucking fire, man. Kendrick, 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 Kendrick. Jesus Christ. That was so good on the first listen. Very meditative and introspective and just thoughtful and substantive and shit. I don't even want to read the lyrics. I just want to go off the strength of that first listen and kind of give my interpretation. It's a bit of an odd one because the cover art is obviously a pair of beat up black air forces and we know culturally what black air forces mean, right? They mean fucking goon time, right? They mean robbery, shootings, violence, just bad things, right? When you see black air forces, right? It means you're up to you're up to some badness. So you've got a pair of beat up black air force ones that allegedly this picture came from an eBay listing as well, which is fucking hilarious. Um, but then you've got the beat itself. That's proper chill lounge bar, cocktail bar, beach, chill vibes. But then you've got the contrast of the, of the shoes on the cover up. So quite clearly, and he's obviously the content of what he's saying. You can see this is like an internal struggle that Kendrick is going through and in the title, right, of the track itself, it's almost like implying that he's a little bit upset. He's in a weird position and maybe a little bit annoyed at the position that he's in and maybe with the response that people are having to records or even to how they're responding to Drake and shit, um, especially when you think about the things that he said about Drake, it's maybe maybe made him question everything about life, about the industry, about morals, principles, all this sort of stuff, and maybe made him fucking also realize why some people are on just pure badness because the world is just full of morally corrupt morally corrupt godless you know people out there that would do anything for a bit of fame and attention so maybe that's what the struggle is kind of having internally which is why we see this contrast between the cover art and the beat itself and maybe the contents of what he's saying and the restraint in some of the things that he's not saying but implying through some words and vaguenesses and innuendos here and there and um yeah and i i get there's a lot of like also it kind of feels like message wise it's like i'm just gonna let the chips fall where they may like I've, I've already proved to you that i'm the better rapper i'm the better artist i think i'm the better person man whatever but i'm gonna let the chips fall where they may because there's a lot of tomfoolery going because we have to also be honest as a culture as a society we're in the age of tomfoolery right a lot of people who are just un un unashamed unashamed and just have no scruples to kind of embarrass themselves and embarrass their family, whatever, for the sake of a couple of bucks are the ones who are winning nowadays in life, right? The more shameless you are, the more ability you have to kind of make loads of fucking money and to be famous and to kind of propel yourself up the charts and get all this notoriety and shit. So I think for people like an artist, right, with a capital A, like Kendrick Lamar, maybe that's annoying, right? Maybe that's fucking annoying. When you think you're incredibly talented and you think you're a proper artist when you actually try to make music that uplifts informs you know soothes and then the things that people are turning up to are what you would deem to be destructive and detrimental to humans in general not just the black pe black people right um that's got to be frustrating to see and to kind of see play out in real time and maybe the change in faces of people the flip-flopping you know, maybe a part of him also maybe is annoyed that a lot of Drake fans who were stands of him have also jumped on his train. It's like, no, 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 no. I actually, I actually want you to ride harder for Drake. Don't come and now jump on my hype train because I killed your boy. Do you know what I mean? Maybe that makes it like, you know, that kind of like realization that, oh my God, this industry is fucking full of fucking, you know, spineless people and shit. But that's the kind of vibe that I get from it. I don't really get that this is a war record. I feel a lot of people are thinking, oh, this is a dub. This is a fucking, he's sending for Drake. Obviously, there were some bars there that were meant for him. There was obviously some bars there that I felt like they were meant for, for fucking academics. The thing about gluttony was fucking hilarious. Um, but I don't feel this is an entire war record. I think this is more so an introspective verbal diary sort of thing, right? That was also shared to the world. I mean, he's had plenty of demons of his record before. But one thing that's really good as well, and this is not, this has nothing to do with him because this obviously is not his album, but it's just nice to listen to Kendrick rapping it. He could be rapping about the fucking ABCs. Listening to him rap is just so pleasurable on the ear. It's a entire, like, that's the thing that I'm really sad about when it comes to, like, Big Sean. Because clearly he's going for a bit of a metamorphosis. He's trying to change and evolve and develop into another artist. But this recent album he put out was just a bore fest, right? It's completely horrible. I thought so. And really not that great. And a lot of it just has to do with the fact that, you know, 
is it really pleasurable to listen to Big Sean rap? It's not really. He's a good rapper, don't get me wrong. Very talented, clearly. But Kendrick just raps very well, you know? He's economy of words, like his tonality, breath control, the way he rides the beat, like his flows. He's just he's just a really good rapper. Like really good rapper. You can literally just jump on like a little jazz instrumental and just say a couple of bars and have you just spinning. He's fucking pleasurable to listen to, like really pleasurable to listen to. So, um, uh, again, not the greatest track he's put out recently. I don't think it's necessary considering that he won the war. He won the battle, sorry. The war maybe still continuing. He can still tell, you know, Drake to kick rocks. I don't want to do a round two. I don't give a fuck. I buried you, which is perfectly fine to do because he won. You can call the shots. So I don't think it's necessary, but I don't think it's completely aimed at Drake. It's just like, a hey, I need to get this off my chest, you know, and I understand. So, so big up him. Um, uh, you know, love to see it, and I like that he gets as annoyed as I do watching academics. I'm not gonna lie, because <laughs> I love academics. So I watch his streams all the times, but sometimes listening to him speak, and then watching him as a person, and then trying to marry up his opinions and his, you know, because nowadays even academics, I feel like I don't know. It's odd. He, he's he's got into this phase where he's starting to think that all the things that he's saying about artists are informing their decision on how they make art. It's like, bro, like yeah, you may critique some of their music, but I don't think they are making different types of music to appease you like you're not music guy you're the first week sales guy but now he's like in this head he's like oh yeah i said this thing about this rapper that's why they're now making these songs they listen to my advice it's like huh <laughs> what how can you think that highly of yourself like yeah so you know the music commentary seems all over the place everyone flip-flopping people like him then you got the ebros and charlemagne's of the world who are just you know agenda and fucking propaganda lace it's just it's a mess so i understand his frustrations um and i'm glad that he vocalized it and put it on record so big up fucking kendrick um love him and can't wait to hear the album and um yeah man love drake also because i think they brought out the best in each other i'm not gonna lie this battle's been the best for fans for a fan like myself who loves fucking drake it's been amazing because we got to hear some great drake records we got to hear him hungry again um, we probably wouldn't have got 100 like everyone's saying oh Kendrick wouldn't have got the Super Bowl without the beef with Drake duh but I don't think we would have got 100 gigs if Drake didn't lose the battle to Kendrick so I think <laughs> you know what I mean both sets of fans have won and me being more of a Drake fan I've definitely won because we've got some good records that I'm now still playing because you know they're fucking some of the best stuff that he's put out so big up big up them too fucking love to see it honestly i'm so happy to see it when it comes to them too and i can't wait to hear more from them going forward